On the morning of September 11th, 2001, I went to work just like any other morning. What that meant for me was catching the express bus in Staten Island, taking it downtown to the World Trade Center, and switching over to one of the trains, either the A or E trains, to get up to 34th Street. That particular morning, I did not need to be at work bright and early because I had training. And I took the bus at my normal time and then spent extra time in the morning eating breakfast at Burger King directly across the World Trade Center. That morning outside the World Trade Center, there was a little bazaar with the vendors selling things from homemade cookies to newspapers to arts and craft type items. I actually bought a World Almanac that was a year old from one of the vendors that morning, proceeded to go downstairs, took the train, 34th Street, got out, went up to my office, and my coworker immediately said to me, did you see what happened at the World Trade Center? I had been there not even 15 minutes before. That's how my morning started. The morning only continued with seeing the other plane crash into the World Trade Center, and then having no communication with any of the outside world. Cell phones were dead, landlines were just dead, the only person that called me was one of my coworkers from the Dallas, Texas office. Eventually, when I could get a dial tone, I called home to let Mary know that I was okay. I left a voicemail on the machine. She had no idea what had happened. My office kept people at their desks for what seemed like hours after the second plane hit the towers. When we were finally released, I went to the train station to try to take a train back to Brooklyn to start to head home. And the problem was there were no trains running. So I walked from 34th Street all the way down southern Manhattan and across the Brooklyn Bridge and then back through Brooklyn. The amounts of police and the sirens and fire trucks going through the area is something I'll never forget in my entire life. I never wanted to come back to this area. But we're here today, we're going to check out the World Trade Center Memorial and then we're going to go up to the top of the new World Trade Center. This is what the outside grounds look like. in the footprints of where the World Trade Center has existed previously. The names surrounding the fountains are for the victims that died on 9-11. See coming in, a couple of metal columns. This is what it looked like at 8.30 a.m. September 11th, 2001. I can tell you, it was a gorgeous day outside. They, I remember it being in the 70s, I believe. I wore a blue suit to work that day. I think everybody, as I did, knew that we were under attack. For months after the World Trade Center collapsed, this is what you saw as you walked past the former site of the World Trade Center. Days after the World Trade Center collapsed, there was dust everywhere. Papers from various businesses just strewn about the streets. And ultimately, this is what remained. This is where our location is compared to where the original towers were. I used to go to a Krispy Kreme right in the 6th World Trade Center. It was newly refurbished right before the planes hit. As I called the Survivor Stairs, I went down to Vesey Street. There were survivors that managed to escape. Went down. Behind this wall are remains of many who perished at the World Trade Center.
communication antenna from the top of the north building. This is a ladder three fire truck that was destroyed when the towers came down. Ladder three is from the East Village area. This was the construction ramp for World Trade Center One. One year following the attack, September 11th, 2002. This is a column from the South Tower, just completely bent. This is one of the windows from the World Trade Center. And this is what the view would have looked like from the 91st floor, facing north, is the Empire State Building. This was the last column standing. This is an amazing photograph. I have pictures of this from the other side that I took a couple days after September 11th. We have a 9-11 tribute bike built by Paul Jr. And another motorcycle dedicated to the first responders. This garage door is from a firehouse in Brooklyn Heights. We did the 9-11 memorial. The lines are very long to get in. I still have real mixed emotions about the whole memorial piece. I think the items are very tastefully displayed. But the odd things that I notice are, A, the gift shop is just bizarre to me that they're selling kind of memorial type t-shirts and things like that when you know I know people that passed away in the World Trade Center. And then more important than that, where folks kind of like posing for glamour shots and Instagram type pictures and beauty pictures. And we got to the section where the firehouse door is on display where somebody actually like getting in the right proper pose with back arch, etc. to try to po to try to make the most effective, like to try to get the most likes on a picture on like Instagram. Really bothersome. But we made it through. There were a few tears. Now, we're gonna go check out the rebirth of the World Trade Center. We go check out one World Trade Center. Look at that. We're going all the way to the top, baby. All right, well, that's gonna do it for us for tonight. Thank you very much for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Treat others the way you wanna be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.